believing in God is more than that. He is ordered to sacrifice his son. So what is his behavior? How does he react to this? His reaction is, we hear and we obey. What, God, what the Creator orders us to do, we do it. It does not matter whether it seems to make sense to us or not. It does not matter whether it seems to be moral or not. Because the person who believes, truly believes in God, also knows that the Creator is wise, all wise, all knowing, all seeing, all hearing. And that if God commands something, then God should be obeyed. Because that is what is due to Him. That is how the human being should be before the Creator of the heavens and the earth. So Abraham takes his son. <clears throat> and Abraham goes to sacrifice his son. And as Abraham is about to slit the neck of his son, at the point of doing it, an angel comes and intervenes and says, you have fulfilled the command of your Lord. God sends a ram which is sacrificed. What this tells us about Abraham is that his relationship to God, his relationship with the creator of the heavens and the earth, was one of obedience and subservience. But when God commanded Abraham to do something, he submitted himself to God. Although we do not know the religion and the name of the religion of Abraham, we could look and understand by looking at his life, that he was someone who worshipped God alone, the one true God, the Creator, and he submitted to the commandments and to the will of God. Therefore it would be accurate to say that his religion was submission to God. This was his belief, this was his way of life, and this is what he taught to others. How about then Moses? Moses or as we say in Arabic, Musa, who is mentioned in the Qur'an, many places in the Qur'an, the Qur'an talks a lot about Moses, about Musa and the Bani Israel. Then we know that Moses is descended from Abraham, because Abraham had two sons, Ishaq, Isaac and Ismail or Ishmael. From Isaac or Ishaq, Isaac, one of the sons of Isaac was Yaqub or Jacob. Jacob was the one who became known as Israel. That was the name that was given to him also, Israel. And as we know, he had 12 sons. From the twelve sons of Israel came the twelve tribes of Israel. And from those twelve tribes came the descendants of Israel, Bani Israel, from whom Moses was one of them. He was one of the Bani Israel. However, what was the name of the religion of Moses? Was he a Jew? If we examine the origins of the term Jew, what are the origins of this name or this word Jew? The word Jew actually comes from Judah. From Judah. When the people of Israel were taken into captivity, by the Babylonians there was a small piece of land left which was named known as Judah 
Because this was the land that was inhabited by the tribe of Judah and that was one of the one of the twelve sons of Israel. So the people living in that land became known as Jews from Judah. But this is something that took place many, many centuries after the time of Moses. The term Jew did not exist in the time of Moses. So there is no way that you could say that Moses was a Jew because the term Jew did not exist. But Moses had a religion which he taught, which he believed in, which he practiced, and which some of the people around him followed. So what was the name of that religion? Again, if we go to the Bible, we are at a loss to find the name of this religion. However, if again we follow the same methodology, what did Moses believe? And what did he teach? We find the same fundamental message as Abraham. Moses taught people to believe that there is one God who is unique, eternal, self-sufficient, who is the creator and the controller of all things. That there is nothing that can be likened unto God. That God is not like anything in this creation and His representation cannot be made in any way from any created thing. No creature of the sea, no creature of the air, no human being in any way, shape or form resembles God. God is unique. He is the creator of all of these things. And it is to this God, this creator of all things, that the worship should be directed. Prayer, sacrifice, charity and indeed obedience. Because one of the things we find it is clear from the religion of Moses is that there is a comprehensive set of guidance, of laws, of rules and regulations by which and through which the true believers in God must adhere to and must obey. That salvation and success in this life and the life to come is through believing in God and worshipping Him alone and by submitting oneself to the divinely revealed commandments of God. So therefore we find just as Abraham was someone who worshipped God alone and submitted to the commands of God, then Moses similarly believed in God alone submitted to the commands of God and taught other people to do the same. This is the religion of Moses. However, today, the religion that is attributed to Moses, which they call Judaism, which of course in fact in reality is not only considered to be the religion of Moses, but the teachings of other prophets as well. seems to tell a different story. Because Judaism, at least Orthodox Judaism, teaches that salvation is from being a Jew. And that in order to be saved, in order to get salvation, in fact in order to be able to get to paradise, you have to be born of a Jewish woman. In fact, a friend of mine in England had a conversation with the former chief rabbi and he asked him these questions. How can a non-Jew, how can a non-Jew go to paradise? And he replied that it is not possible. 
If you want to go to paradise, the only way that you can get salvation is by being born of a Jewish woman. And that the rest of humanity must go to hell. And this has developed into a religion that teaches that salvation therefore is by right of birth. Not due to one's obedience and submission to God. Although they may acknowledge that a Jew, meaning someone who is born of a Jewish woman, who is sinful may be punished for their sins, but eventually they will go to paradise. And that paradise is for them. However, we find in reality, this is not the teachings of Moses. This is something that has been attributed. This is an idea that has accumulated over time. That the original teachings and the original pure monotheistic religion of Moses, that one should worship God alone and submit to Him, and that that is the way to salvation, has been changed and corrupted into a type of nationalist, or a type of racist religion. And then if we look to Jesus, alayhi salam, may God's peace and blessings be upon him. What was the religion of Jesus? If we look to the religion that is today called Christianity, now that is the religion that is attributed to Jesus. We find quite a different story. In fact, it is one of the perplexing things for someone who is searching for truth that when we look in the Bible, we find that whether it is Abraham, Moses, or any other of the prophets that we find, we find a consistent type of message. A consistent message that there is one God who is the creator and the Lord over things, that God has no likeness and no similitude, and that one should submit to his commandments, obey his laws, and that this is the way to salvation. And the people who turn away from that, they will be destroyed. And the people who follow that, they will be successful. But Christianity now tells us that Jesus comes and teaches, in fact, in reality, a completely different message. In fact, a completely contradictory message. It contradicts that message, number one, on the primary basis of what we believe about God. Because in Christianity we are told that the Creator became created. That the one who is the Lord and the controller of the heavens and the earth became a needy, temporary, mortal human being. Of course that fundamentally contradicts the monotheistic teachings of all of the prophets. In fact, the extraordinary thing is that you can go into the Old Testament and you can find clear statements, for example, in the book of Job, in the book of Job, where Job is describing how God will take a king and this king, he will humiliate him and cause him to suffer at the hands of his enemies and cause him to be killed and it says in the book of Job so that they may know that I am God not man that I am God not man so this passage tells us that God is not a man and how do we know that? because this king